come to us for the weekend. Oh, but Mother wants him to come to us. I'm awfully sorry, I can't. I'm oh. playing golf with Father. My girl simply adores your son. So does mine. He's terribly attractive. Wouldn't my Joan and your Bob make a handsome pair? He is your only son. Yes, he'll get all my money. Oh, I wasn't thinking of that. Of course you weren't. Come on, Dad, back to work. Oh, Mr. Miller, must you take him away? Oh, please. Well, if he wants to stay. Sorry, business first. Come on, Dad, back to the office. Bye. Oh, well, bye. Goodbye. <laughs> So when I heard they wanted a new girl at the office, I spoke to Mr. Butterworth. Who's Mr. Butterworth? Our chief tester. He tests all the musical instruments. And he said if I brought Vera along to the factory, he'd see if she was suitable. And that was very kind of you. Vera? Yes, Mother? Hurry up. Molly's waiting for you. Mm -hmm. What will they pay her? Oh, I don't know. Oh, well, whatever it is, it'll be welcome and it'll keep her from getting into mischief. My little Vera doesn't get into mischief. If you don't call walking into shops and pricing things she can't pay for mischief, I do. I won't do it again, Mother, I promise. We've heard that before. Ready, Vera? Yes, I'm coming. You've got to be at the factory at two. I shall walk in and be then... thrown out. You know, you'll get yourself into trouble one of these days. I'm going in. But we haven't got time. Vera, I'll go without you. This is absolutely the latest model, madam. Mm. One can get all stations, of course. Any station you want, madam. Now, where could I put it? I'm thinking of my boudoir, you know. It would look charming anywhere, madam. How much is it? 140 guineas, madam. Haven't you anything better? I'm sorry. This is the best we can do today. Uh -huh. Thank you. If Madam will be seated, I'm sure I can find something suitable. Thank you. This is charming, Madam. You think so? This would suit Madam marvelously. Oh, no, that's ordinary. I require something attractive and chic. Naturally, Madam. I shall be going about a good deal this season. Quite, Madam. Uh, do you see anything that interests you? Not up to the present. Wait! What about that model there? Now that is too divine. Can I persuade Madam to try it on? Perhaps I will. Miss Jones, Madam will try on the mauve spot. Will you kindly step this way? It's a little plain, isn't it? another day. Do you know you've kept me waiting for a quarter of an hour? Oh, I'm sorry. And I suppose, as usual, you've tried everything on in the shop? Yes. A frock, a fur coat, a diamond necklace. And then I said, haven't you anything better? And walked out. I know. But I like beautiful things. Oh, come on. Do you want this job or don't you? Right, she's to see Mr. Butterworth. Oh, all right. Now, I've told him all about you, so all you've got to do is to smile and pretend to be intelligent and you might get the job. Come in. Mr. Butterworth, this is Miss Hart. Oh, come in. Mr. Robert Miller is in conference. In conference? In conference. He's in conference, sir. Sorry, sir, he's in conference. But he would wish to see me. Well, I'll put you through to his secretary. Hello? Mr. Miller's secretary speaking. Sorry, he's in conference. Well, I'll go and ask him. Sorry, he says he can't see you. Well, give me the little plump one with the ankles. You can have her. You can have them all. That's very nice of you, my boy. Dear Bob, you're such fun. What a darling your father is. Well, what's wrong about that? And all those dear mamas. 
My Mabel's simply dying to dance with you, Mr. Miller. Oh, I must meet your father. I'm sure I shall like him. He's so rich. No, no, they don't say that. Well, that's what they mean anyway. Oh, those mothers. Well, I'm not keen on the mothers. The daughters are as bad. Oh, no, they're not. No, not all of them. I'm rich Mr. Miller's son. That's what I am. Come in. Sorry, Mr. Miller's in conference. Of course I'm telling you the truth. Oh, madam, you don't think I'd deceive you? You'll ring up tomorrow. Thank you. So kind. Why can't you mind your own business? I want to see young Mr. Robert. But he can't. He's busy. I want to engage an extra girl. But he can't without his permission. You know, that was an untruth about him being in conference. You lied to that lady. And a good job, too. If it wasn't for me, he wouldn't have a moment's peace. I look after him, and I love doing it. The mother instinct is strong in your bosom. Not so much as a mother. How old are you, Miss Fisher? <laughs> Twenty-one. If you don't get out of here, I'll push that thing down your throat. Oh, that would be impossible. But I welcome the attempt. I should feel that your indifference to me was waning. I'll go away. I'm busy. Your preference for young Mr. Robert to myself is exceedingly noticeable. In fact, I'm looking forward to his holiday. Yes, it's about time you have a holiday. You're getting no fun out of life. Why, when I was your age... I know. Mother used to tell me. It's a lie. Well, goodbye, Dad, for a month. Goodbye. Taking a car? Yes, a brand new one. Built to order. Good. Well, have a good time. Thanks. Cheerio, Pop. Goodbye. Goodbye, Anne. Goodbye, Mr. Miller. Any letters? Then. First call. In conference. Goodbye, Henry. Goodbye, sir. Oh, sir. May I engage an extra girl? Oh, sure, Henry. Help yourself. Oh, thank you, sir. Sorry to trouble you. Goodbye, trouble. I'm finished with you, trouble. I'm leaving you and worried for behind me. Goodbye, trouble. I'm moving at the double and going where you'll never, never find me. I'm delighted, so happy and excited. Know that there are brighter days in store. Goodbye, trouble, and once I've lost you, trouble, I'll never, never find you anymore. I've put on my hat, I've locked up my bed, the dog's at the vet, I've settled my debt. In case I don't get any peace, I've paid up every penny piece. Don't know my tailor, my butcher, my baker, my grocer or candlestick maker. Goodbye, trouble, I've finished with you, trouble. Goodbye, trouble, I'm moving at the double. I'm delighted, so happy and excited. Goodbye, trouble, and once I've lost you, trouble. Miss Hart, sit down. Are you musical? Yes, I think so. Can you uh, play this? No. This? No. Uh, the, any of these? No. Pity. I can play them all. All at once? Oh, no. That would be impossible. Uh, the really important thing is, can you stamp? Like that? No, no, I, I mean uh, 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 this. Yes, I think so. I'll show you. Come along. You will have the benefit of working under my personal supervision. Oh, thank you. Your salary will be 30 shillings a week, and you'll be required to be here at 9 in the morning. This is your desk. Uh, you can sit down, and I'll get you your first work to do. Hey, so you got the job? Yes, thanks to you. 
Isn't it wonderful? There we are. Now I'm going to show you how to stamp systematically. First of all, you take the stamp firmly in the right hand. So. Then you press it down on the ink pad. So. And then you place the stamp in the space indicated. So. Simple. <laughs> I'll show you again. One, two. One, two. There now. Do you think you could manage that? I'll try to. One, two. One, two. One, two. <laughs> yes. Tempo good, technique weak. Now I'll show you how to save ink. You breathe on the stamp, alternate blows. Thus. Ha. One, two. Ha. Four. One, two. Ha. Four. <laughs> now you try it. showroom. What's this? One shot lubrication. Here. Good. Radio. You've seen this? Adjust your spring according to your surface. Bumpy road over here. Speeding or cornering over there. She certainly is a peach. Uh, I wish you were mine. Here, how do you say that works? I just told you. Shove the lever over here on a bad road and over there when the going's good. Oh, I see. Uh, come into the office and I'll show you how it functions. When are you leaving? Tonight. What, alone? Absolutely. Good evening, madam. Good evening. How much is this car? It's not for sale, madam. Then why is it in the window? It happens to be rather what I want. We can supply you with one just like it. But I don't want one like it. I want this one. You can't go for a holiday in a car like that alone. It's indecent. That car needs a girl. Some nice little thing who loves you for yourself alone. Mm -hmm. Where do I find her? Where do you find her? You, old Bill Miller's son. You can find a dozen. All loving me for myself alone. Mm -hmm. You've no idea how being old Bill Miller's son's cramped my love mm -hmm. life. It's no good, Peters. I'm fed up with girls. <laughs> I think. Could you take over for a moment, Chief? I'm all in. Oh, what's the trouble? There's a girl down there who insists on having Mr. Miller's car. Well, tell her she can't have it. But she won't take no for an answer. Hear that, Bob? I... Just say, here. Hey, hey. Good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon. My assistant tells me that uh, you wish to buy this car. I do. But I'm told it's not for sale. That's very annoying. Oh, that's quite all right. You, you can have it with pleasure. Oh. No, thank you. I've changed my mind. Oh, but you must have it. It's, uh, it's a beautiful car. It, it's a splendid car. Look at all those wheels. No, really, thank you. I don't think I want it after all. Oh, please don't go. Have a look at the inside. Well, perhaps a little. Well? Oh, it's lovely. There you are. You see, you hadn't seen the inside at all. It's not a bit like other cars inside. It's all new. Yes, I can see that. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, they're all new gadgets on it. Get an eyeful of this one. I, I mean, may I direct your attention to this, madam? The radio. Observe. <laughs> Underneath, the one-shot lubricator. Oh. Yeah. What does it do? What does it do? The one-shot lubricator. Mm. Um, yes. I will tell you. One shot, your lubricator. Tipsy? No oil. Well, isn't that tipsy? Yes. No, I... You know, you really must have this car. Come inside, I can demonstrate better. You bang your side while I bang mine. Fingers. Come sit here. Oh, no, really. 
I don't think I will. I say, this is grand, isn't it? Yes. You know, you've simply got to have this car. Oh, no, no, please don't show me anymore. Oh, what's that? Uh, that. Nice coffee, isn't it? Lovely springs. Yes. Yes. <laughs> now, I'll tell you what this is for. You see this lever? Well, that is to adjust your bumps. Over here, little bumps. Over here, big bumps. Well, I think I must go. Oh, not yet. Let's go for a drive. In the shop? Yes. Shall we? Yes. <laughs> you came to me from nowhere. Just like this beautiful song Let's you and I go somewhere Darling, won't you come along? Oh, you'll find it very thrilly As we go through Piccadilly In our car of dreams We can laugh at traffic As we drive along the avenue We can stop to dilly-dally On a hill or in a valley In our car of dreams there with you beside me, I will sing a song of love to you. My heart will beat a mile or more, a minute in your sweet embrace. Our lips will meet in heaven for a minute, we'll give love a chase. In a year or two or later, we can take the car and trade her for our future schemes. Don't you think a scooter is a cute little car of green? Oh, it's been so very thrilly since we drove through Piccadilly in our car of green. Never thought I'd ever meet a fellow quite as nice as you. Since we stopped to Dilly Dally, we've become so very pally in our car of green. Can't you see that you were meant for me and I was meant for you? My heart will be the mile or more a minute in your sweet embrace. Our lips will be the heaven for a minute we'll give love a chase. In a year or two or later we can take the car and trade her for our future scheme. Don't you think a scooter is a cute little car? I say. I say you'll take the car, won't you? No. It's cheap, a hundred pounds. No. Fifty. No. Five. No. Nothing. No. John, follow that young lady, see where she goes and come back and tell me. Very good, sir. I've changed my mind. I'm not going away. Well, what about the car? Uh, the car? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, you better send it. Where to? I don't know. Yet. I've got it! I've got this! What, what? The job! What job? The job I went after! Isn't it wonderful? <gasps> well, thank goodness for that. Job? Job? Job. Work, dear. Something you don't understand. I understand work. You work very hard, don't you, Daddy? All day long in my shop, buying, selling. <laughs> the day you sell something, I shall have hysterics. Do you know what I've been doing all the afternoon? What, my dear? Stamping. Stamping? Your little feet must be tired. How much are they going to pay you? Thirty shillings a week. If you'd sell some of your rubbish instead of hoarding it like a cat with one kitten, there'd be no need for the girl to work in an office from morning till night, stomping herself to death. Oh, no, Mother, stamping. Like this. One, two. There's someone in the shop. Shall I go? No, let your father. Who knows, he might sell something. Someone come in for a change again, I expect. 
Where? You brought the car, sir. Car? What car? The car for the young lady, sir. <laughs> no young lady here owns a car? Oh, yes, sir. My orders are to deliver the car and get a receipt. Oh, here is the young lady. Will you sign, please? But there must be some mistake. My daughter couldn't possibly afford to pay for it. There's nothing to pay, madam. Would you mind? But I don't know what it's all about. Vera, did you order a car? Oh, no, mother. I'm sorry, miss. I've brought a car and it's yours. It's outside now. It's, it. it's my car. What do you mean, your car? Oh, that is not really mine. I mean, I did look at it, but I didn't buy it really, not mother. Then what's it doing here? Well, I don't know. Wait a minute, children. It's a nice car, isn't it? Mm. Nobody asked for money. Well, why worry? Let's take it. Thank you, sir. Quite right, sir. Will you sign here, please? <laughs> Oh, no, Daddy, really, I don't think I ought to. Don't be silly, Vera. Sign it. Thank you. Good evening, all. It's mine. Well, you think I'm satisfied with that, young lady? You're very much mistaken. You tell me the name of the shop where the car came from, and I go right round there at once and find out what it's all about. Where is it? I bear grave tidings, old chief. Oh? There's an old bird downstairs who wants to see the manager. She's very angry. It appears someone sent her daughter a motor vehicle. Her mother. Now what are you going to do? <laughs> I know what you're going to do. Hmm? Come here. Okay. And what can I do for you, madam? Good evening. Mm. For some reason best known to yourself, young man, you've sent my daughter a car, and you may as well know that she can't possibly afford to pay for it. There's no charge for the car, madam. Free. What's the matter with it? Oh, nothing at all, madam. Your daughter's a very lucky young lady. She happened to be our 10,000th customer. And what's that got to do with it? She can have any car she chooses. For nothing. Why? Advertisement. Do you mean there's nothing to pay? Nothing whatever, madam. <laughs> well, that's different, of course. I'm sorry to have troubled you. No, not at all, madam. You're quite sure there's nothing... Nothing whatever. Thank you very much indeed. Good evening. Thank you, madam. Good evening. How did you take it? Very bravely. Look here, you can't go about giving brand new Rolls Royces to any girl who happens to walk. She's not any girl. She's the sort of girl who, who would like a car like that. Oh, you think she'd like it? Well, I hope so. Personally, I should be very disappointed if she didn't. So should I. Oh, 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 oh. in my office. Oh, I just dropped in. Did you bring these in here? Yes, I brought them for you. Well, do you mind keeping them in your own office to make the room stuffy? I'm testing some trombones this morning, Miss Fisher. Would you care to come and hear me? No, I would not. You wouldn't care if I had a split lip. Stop! 
You see, you've been hurrying. You're out of breath. Kindly remember that after 9 a.m., your breath is the property of Messrs. W. and R. Miller. Talk. It's mine. What is? The car. It isn't. It isn't. I was the 10,000th customer, so they gave it me for nothing. For nothing? For advertisement. You're pulling my leg. No, it's through. Where is it now? Standing outside my house. <laughs> Mr. Miller's secretary. Mr. Miller's secretary. Mr. Miller's secretary. Mr. Miller's secretary is being. All right. Stop that noise in here. Impossible. Mr. Miller insists that I do my testing in my own office. There have been complaints. I'm sorry, my duty. Henry, please. It's Anne asking. Mr. Butterworth regrets. It's a hard, hard world for all of us, for the great and for the small of us. So everybody, once in a while, should help a lame dog over a stile. Do a little good to someone, sometimes, somehow. Try and be a ray of sunshine. Make it a bow. Give a cup of kindness and don't pass a beggar by. Always be a sportsman. Remember your old school tie. Never, never drive a hungry sparrow away. You may be a hungry sparrow yourself someday. Place a mother's kiss on a careworn and wrinkled brow. So do a little good to someone. I don't want any. Any what? Whatever you are selling. <laughs> oh, I'm not selling anything, so no, I, I was just admiring your car. Well, don't bang on it. She is new. You going for a drive? Me? <laughs> going for a drive? <laughs> Who will look after my shop? Oh, is that your shop? Mm, my shop. And inside I have such lovely things. China, so silk, and old ivory, and a chair. My dear young man, I have a chair. Just come inside. I'll show you something wonderful. I say, is she at home? What do you mean, is she at home? Your daughter, Vera, she's at work. Work? I don't talk of Vera, I talk of my chair. Shh, my wife. I don't tell my wife about my chair. She would make me sell it. I say, that's nice. Beautiful but not for sale. <laughs> Look, my chair. Yes, looks very comfortable. Comfortable? That chair comfortable? Yes, I think so. It's not to sit on, young man. That's a chair. Not a chair? Look, velvet, soft like a maiden's cheek. Will your daughter be coming into lunch? I wouldn't let anyone sit on her for a hundred pounds. What? Uh, oh, no, 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 of course not. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I must say it certainly is a chair. Young men, you know a good thing when you see it. <laughs> say when. When? I say, will you be going to meet her? Meet her? What for? Well, I thought you might be going to drive her back in the car from wherever she is. I don't drive those things. Oh, I see. Your daughter drives it then. She doesn't drive either, Chin Chin. 
Not yours. Ah. You must have a chauffeur. A chauffeur, me? <laughs> I can't even afford to buy petrol. Oh, that's a pity. I say, would you listen to a business proposition? It's not for sale. No, 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 not the chair, the car. Now look, I'm a chauffeur, I'm out of work. Why don't you let me drive the car for private hire, when your daughter doesn't need it? You find the car, I pay the running expenses. Why, we, we could make 20 pounds a week between us. 10 pounds a week? Sure. Well, well, well. 10 pounds a week? That's a lot of money. 52 weeks in a year, that's... <clears throat> Listen, young man, come back at lunchtime and see my daughter. Okay, partner. We'll ask her, you see, it's her car. Sure. And don't say anything to my wife about my chair. <laughs> my chair, my... My... <gasps> oh! Oh, my chair! It sounds very good to me. Almost too good to be true. No, Mother. Well, what do we know about the young man? Absolutely nothing. Don't let him see you are too anxious, or you'll frighten him away. Good afternoon, sir. Come in. My wife. Good afternoon. How do you do? My daughter. Pleased to meet you again, miss. Father, that's the man who served me in the showroom. That's quite right, but I've left. I, I have to get a job in the open air. I'm rather delicate. Bad cough. Oh, I didn't notice it yesterday. Didn't you? No. Oh. Well, sir? I told her and she thinks perhaps, yes. Oh, that's fine. And how do we know that he won't steal the car? Oh, but, Mother, do No, sir, no. There's uh, something in what your other daughter says. <coughs> oh, well, he doesn't look dishonest. Perhaps you'd better give it a trial, Vera. All right. Just to see how it works. May I drive you to your um, office? No, thank you. Please don't trouble. Oh, it's no trouble at all. Can I come too? Certainly. That's all right, then. I won't come. Hurry up, darling, and don't be too late. And you drive carefully, won't you, young man? Yes, Mrs. Hart. Daddy says you are going to earn us a lot of money. I'll say I am. <laughs> I thought you couldn't drive. I can't, but I want to pretend. May I? Of course. Shift over, madam. I say, turn that knob. No. Go on, turn it. Which way do we go? Straight on and I'll tell you. What sort of jobs will you get? Oh, weddings, christenings, parties, mostly weddings. Why mostly weddings? Because I like weddings, don't you? Oh, yes, nice weddings. <laughs> I love weddings where the groom is young and handsome. The bride is young and happy with the brown hair, grey eyes, thick lashes all round them. Turn to the right, please. I don't think you'd better drive me right up to the place where I work. Why not? Well... The car, with you driving it, it might look funny. Well, why should I make it look funny? Oh, no. You know what I mean. Oh, of course I do. Turn to the left, please. Sorry. You see, I don't think my salary is quite large enough to own a car like this. No, I suppose not. I get 30 shillings a week. A week? A week. That's disgraceful. It's slavery. Sorry. What's your name? Bob. Oh, Bob. Stop quick! In here! Miller's factory! I, I mean, Miss Fisher, what do you think? I was returning from my lunch, humming softly to myself, when up rise my lady in a Rolls Royce. Have you been drinking? No, certainly not. I saw her with my own eyes. Oh, who? Miss Hart, the new girl. 
Steps out of a car that can't have cost less than two thousand pounds with her own chauffeur, if you please. No. Yes, her own chauffeur. Lardy da, I call it. And all on thirty shillings a week. Oh no, that would be impossible. Hello. Uh, oh yes, Mr. Miller speaking. Uh, yes, Mr. Miller is here. He wants to speak to you. Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Butterworth speaking, sir. Oh yes, certainly, sir. As you say, sir. Well, what's the matter with you? Mr. Robert wishes Miss Hart's salary to be raised to five pounds a week. Mr. Robert, eh? Oh, well, boys will be boys. Oh, <laughs> I feel like a widow. Piffle, he never even looked at you. Five pounds a week. I'll go and tell her. No, let me. I feel I have the right. Oh, very well, I'll, I'll send her to you. Thank you, Henry. What are you laughing at? You called me Henry. Miss Hart, will you kindly go to Miss Fisher's office at once? <laughs> Has she done anything wrong? Oh, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. If Miss Hart chooses to be driven to business in her own car, and Mr. Robert Miller raises her salary to five pounds a week, <laughs> I suppose it's her own affair, but I wouldn't venture to say that she'd done anything wrong. Butterworth, aren't you a pig? Miss James, how dare you? <laughs> so you're Miss Hart? Yes. I have a message about you from Mr. Robert Miller. Yes. You know him, of course. No. Don't you? He hasn't been here since I came. Oh, I thought you might have met him socially, driving here and there in your car. Of course, I forgot. You don't drive yourself, do you? You have a chauffeur? Yes, I have a chauffeur who drives my car. On 30 shillings a week. How clever you must be. No, just lucky. Some people call it luck. I was the 10,000th customer, you know. How nice. It's a business advertisement. Yes, it is rather, isn't it? What do you mean? Nothing. And now I have such a surprise for you. Your salary has been raised to five pounds a week, and you'll never guess who's done it. Mr. Robert Miller. Why? Well, if you don't know, I don't. Oh. Well, if I see Mr. Miller, I shall thank him. I'm sure you will. What is he like? Do you mind getting out of this office? No. Of course I will. Thank you very much. Can you beat this? raised your salary to five pounds. I don't know. I've never seen him. Why has he done it? That's what I'm going to find out. I thought there was something peculiar about that girl. Have you noticed? It's always the quiet ones. She ought to be ashamed of herself. I see you're going to enjoy this. What's the matter? Nothing. Yes, there is. What is it? No. Something at the factory? They have raised my salary. Oh, that's splendid. Isn't it? It's horrible. Why? Mr. Miller himself, the young one who did it. Well? Oh, I could kill him. What for? 
Can't you guess what they all did? When he raised my salary for no reason? No. Well, they invented one. Oh, Lord. Oh, I was so happy, too. Oh, I'm sorry. You're not half as sorry as I am. Well, it's not your fault, is it? I'm spoiling your day. I won't. Now come. Look at me. I'm laughing. You see? I'm quite happy. <laughs> now you laugh, too. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care, do we? No. <laughs> what do we care? <laughs> 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 Mr. Robert Miller is mud. What a fool I was. What do you mean, was? Permit me, sir. But there was that angel, slaving her life away in that office for 30 bob a week. Stiff. All day long stamping things. I'll bet that stamp weighed a ton. I couldn't bear to think of it. Of course you couldn't. So up went her money and bang went her reputation. Oh, I ought to be kicked. A Miss Hart to see you, sir. To see me? Yes, sir. She says she's from the factory and would you be kind enough to see her? Good Lord. Who did she ask for? Mr. Robert Miller, sir. That's funny. Is it? Well, of course it is. Why? She hasn't come to see me. She's come to see me. Oh, I see. She's come to see Robert Miller, the boss. Oh. Not Bob, the chauffeur. I say, it's a bit awkward, isn't it? What had I better do? I don't know. But do you mind if I watch? No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Show Miss Hart in. Yes, sir. Mr. Miller will see you, miss. Do you think he will mind my coming to see him? He may, and again, he may not. Mm -hmm. I'm a little frightened, you know. What is he like? Good as gold, miss, when he gets his own way. But if he's crossed, he's a bit odd. Oh, I see. What you want to do with him is use tact, like I do. Miss Hart, sir. Good afternoon. Why did you do it? Do what? When I asked why my salary was raised, they told me it was by your orders, and, and then they laughed. I don't see why you should let that worry you. Tell them to buy their own business. I, if I choose to raise an employee's salary, I suppose I can. At the factory, they say you must have reason for it. Nonsense. I never set eyes on you until now. Well, then why did you do it? What? Why did I do it? I... Let me see. Why, uh, Why did I do it? Uh, sit down. Let me see now. Why, uh, Why did I do it? Oh, reports, yes. I remember. There was a special mention of the excellent work you'd done. Yes? Hmm. I was informed that in the whole factory there was no one as good as you at... By the way, what, what do you do? Stamp. Stamp? Yeah. Oh, stamp. Most important work. For hundreds of letters, and if the stamps weren't stuck on properly... Oh, no. Oh, no, not that sort of stamp. No. I do it like this. Look. <gasps> Say, that's rather difficult, isn't it? Oh, no. <laughs> you could learn it. Could I? Mm -hmm. Try. Oh, thank you. Now, one... Two, three, four. <laughs> One, two, breathe, four. <laughs> there you are, and uh, that's why I increased your salary. So you are pleased with me? Mm. Extraordinarily. And 
Would you do something to make me very happy? You bet. Reduce my salary again. On one condition. That you let me give you a little dinner one night. To, to celebrate the reduction in salary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come along. <laughs> it isn't every employer who reduces his workers' money the moment they ask him. <laughs> a quad to dinner, eh? Better say yes before I change my mind. Oh, yes, of course, tact. Huh? I mean, yes, very well. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well? Mm, not bad. I've, uh, I've reduced her salary for her. Yes, I saw you doing it. All that stamping business was quite unnecessary. A little mild flirtation never did anyone any harm. Oh, and what makes you think she might care for a little mild flirtation? She's a girl. She isn't. What? Oh, she's different. My dear fellow, don't be such a complete ass. Because she let you drive her around in that car, do you think she wouldn't go out with anybody else who asked her? I know she wouldn't. Well, I know she would. I've asked her. She's promised to dine with me. What? Oh. Well, I, I expect she thought that... Uh... She thought I was her boss. And a much better bet than a chauffeur. That's what she thought. Oh, come on, Bob, snap out of it. After all, she's only just another girl. Don't let her make a fool of you. You're the fool. All right, all right, don't lose your temper. Look here, do you seriously think she wouldn't chuck you over, Bob the chauffeur, for me, Robert Miller, the boss? I don't think. I know she wouldn't. Why, of course she would. She wouldn't. All right. We'll see. One, two, three, four, five. Five weddings in one day. Not so bad, isn't it? Well, it's the spring, you know. And twelve christenings on Tuesday afternoon. Yes, that's from last oh. spring. Twelve. There you are, sir. Fifteen pounds ten for you. And 15 pounds 10 for me. We're making our fortune, my boy. <laughs> Thank you. Shall I ask you now? <laughs> Mr. Hart, I suppose there'd be no objection to my taking Vera out into the country on Saturday afternoon? No, 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 I don't think so. She is rather fond of scenery. And how far are you intending to go? Uh, uh, well, we really hadn't made up our minds, Mrs. Hart. Oh, so you fixed it up with Vera already. No, 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 no. It's going to be a surprise for Vera. She taught me so. We were very late bringing her home the last time. Oh, you won't be late, my boy, will you? No, I promise I won't. Oh, very well. If she wants to go, I suppose she can. Oh, that's awfully good of you, Mrs. Hart. And you needn't trouble to keep on bringing me bunches of violets. I know what you're after. I'm nobody's fool. Mr. Hart. Would you mind if I went and had another look at that Chinese god you have in the shop out there? Another? Certainly, my boy, certainly. I'm only too delighted. Thanks. It's one of my favorite pieces. Oh, thanks. Excuse me, darling. Oh, this is hard. And on Saturday, we are going somewhere lovely. Who's we? Me and my car. I see. Just you and your car. Oh, and a friend. Where are you and your friend going? To the carnival at the Crystal Ring Hotel. It's about 50 miles. Well, he's taking her out again. Oh. Crying won't stop him, and it only makes your nose red. They're going on Saturday. How do you know? Well, I saw them talking, so I... Oh, well, a little bird told me. Well, he ought to be ashamed of himself going about with an employee. It would serve him right if someone saw him. Yes. Where's he taking her? They're driving down to the Crystal Rink Hotel. Henry, would you like to drive me down to the Crystal Rink Hotel? Do you mean that, Anne? Yes, I do. And when I get there, I shall make it my business to meet them face to face. And I shall say to him, <laughs> good evening, Mr. Robert. But I shall just give her one look. I just remembered I can't drive you there. I've broken my differential. That doesn't matter. We're going. Looking to see if your frock's still there? Yes. <laughs> How am I going to change? Well, it's all right. You can take a room. Yes, sir. Eight Ethel, please. Eight Ethel, thank you. Hello, Miss Hart. Is this the car I've heard so much about? Yes. Hmm. This is my friend, Mr. Smith. How do you do? And this is my employer, Mr. Robert Miller. Oh, how do you do? We are going to the carnival. At the crystal rink? Oh, so am I. 
Uh, perhaps we can have that little dinner we arranged. Oh, no. I'm dining with Mr. Smith. Oh, that's a pity. Never mind. I'll see you down there. The shawl? Why, well, I was looking for that. What do you want to put it on my seat for? It might have been the sandwiches. It is the sandwiches. Goodbye, trouble. I'm finished with your trouble. I'm leaving you and worry far behind me. Goodbye, trouble. I'm leaving at the double and going where you'll never, never find me. I'm delighted, so happy and excited. Know that there are brighter I say my car's broken down. What's the matter with it? I don't know. You see, I know practically nothing whatever about motor cars. Is that so? Yes, that is so. But Mr. Smith is a chauffeur. He can tell you what's wrong with it at once. Well, of course he can. I have a splendid idea. You wouldn't mind giving me a lift to Miss Hart, would you? Of course not. Would we? Oh, uh, well, I don't know. Uh, would we? Oh, well, there we are. I can drive your car, and Mr. Smith can fix mine and bring it along. Oh, but... Can't you, my man? It all depends on what Miss Hart says. Oh, you wouldn't leave a friend stranded, would you, Miss Hart? No, of course not, but... Well, that's settled. I can come. It may take you some time to get her going. I seem to have lost all the plugs. Register too. I'm taking a room to change my dress. Oh, that's all right. I'm doing it for you. Yes, that's it. That's her car. I shall just say good afternoon. And you won't forget your look, will you? What about that little dinner? Your friend Smith may be late. Oh, no, thank you. I shall wait for him. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Peters. We are a hot. Robert Miller. Well, there may be nothing in it. But both their names in his handwriting. Mm, damning. Oh, uh, we should require rooms to change in. Very good, sir. Would you kind of stand? Oh, thank you. 145 and 146. Thank you. I'll sign for myself. Oh, yes, of course. Two-faced hussy. It's one man to buy her a car to take her other boyfriend out in. Two strings to her bow, eh? This is where we could show her up to Mr. Bob in her true light. If only I knew where he is now. Hello. Hello. When did you get here? About half an hour ago. Mm. I say, did he look after you all right? Mr. Miller? Who? Oh, oh, yes, of course, yes, Mr. Miller. Mm -hmm. He asked me to dine with him. Oh, he did, did he? Yes. What did you say? What do you think I said? Mr. Robert. Pat me on the back, I'm choking. They are both here. Now she's for it. Suppose they meet and there's a fight. I hope there is. If there's any nonsense, I may have to manhandle them both. I say, this is going to be fun, isn't it? Oh, I'm so excited. Do you mind being made love to in a skating rink? By uh, whom? Me. You see, when you went off with Mr. Miller this afternoon, I knew. You what? But I love you. I simply can't be without you. Ever. How do you feel about it? I can't be without you ever. You wouldn't mind sharing a couple of rooms over a garage, would you? Not with you. Do you think there's anyone looking? No. Everybody 
nobody is looking at us. <laughs> of course they're not. Of course they are. I'll wait for you in the cocktail bar. Hey. Hello, Smith. Brought my car. I want to talk to you. Certainly, my man. What is it? Look, look. Man, have it, please. Martini. What do you mean by leaving me your rotten old car with all the plugs gone? She's not a rotten old car. I wouldn't have her at a gift. Well, she suits me all right. They're quarreling about her. I told you she turned down the chauffeur for the boss. It wasn't a fair test. What did you order? No, I haven't. Here, step, step. Look, they're going to fight. I'm going to tell her. Tell her they met? Yes, I want to see her face. Sorry, sir. Pull up. Miss Hart. Mr. Butterworth. I think it's only fair to inform you that your duplicity is unmasked. My what? Duplicity. Double crossing. Mr. Miller and Mr. Peters have met. Mr. Peters? I don't know him. Oh, come, please. I happen to know that you arrived at this hotel with him. But I don't know him. That is Mr. Peters smoking the cigarette. No, that's Mr. Miller, whom I don't like. No, the other one's Mr. Miller. No, that's Mr. Smith, whom... whom I love and I'm going to marry him. I tell you, that's Mr. Miller. Do you think I don't know? That's young Mr. Miller, your employer. Mr. Miller, my employer? Bob? Did you say that he'd asked you to marry him, uh, uh, madam? Well, yes. He has asked me to share two rooms with him over a garage. Well, if you'll pardon me, that is not what I should call a proposal of marriage. Do you think he... Well... You promised to marry me. Then you told her the truth. I swear I didn't. Mr. Miller, you asked me to dine with you. I shall be charmed. Oh, I didn't know chauffeurs were allowed in this hotel. Has the lady I didn't go up with come down? No, sir. Oh, then I'll go up. Very good, sir. Oh, excuse me. Have you seen a white cow lady? No, sir. Oh. 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 Has the gentleman who didn't go up with me gone up? Yes, miss. Thanks, then I'll go up. And. 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 Everybody off the ice. Wait a box of 48.
come on, come on. Well, I don't suppose it matters. That's the stuff. It makes you laugh and play. <laughs> <laughs> Something to drink, sir. Something to drink. No, thank you. Very good, sir. Good evening, Mr. Robert. Hello, Anne. May I sit down? Of course. Oh, look, this is Mark. Funny, she didn't see me. Can't see anything from Mr. Peters. Can't she? I haven't noticed. Isn't this marvellous? Does she remind you of anything? Two rooms over in Gaza. No, no, nothing. You down here alone? Yes. What a shame. I could skate straight to heaven. Well, there's no ice in the other place. You know, Mr. Miller, I'm beginning to like you a little better. Pray, have some more. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I drove you home, Miss Hart. When I require my car, I'll send for it. You're coming home now. Mr. Miller, please. Key, please. Yes, sir. One, four, four. Can I have the key of my suite? One, oh, two. One, oh, two. Thank you. Did you see Miss Hart? Yes. Which way'd she go? She's gone to Mr. Peter's suite, number 102. I hope you're not going to do anything rash. I'm going to tell a woman exactly where she gets off. Who? Oh. This is not my room. Oh, it's mine. I thought you'd like a little drink before facing the night air. No. Oh, please, 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 please. Well, perhaps a little. A very little. Oh, good. Miss Hart was surprised when I told her that Mr. Peters was not an employer after all. You told her that? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry if I did anything wrong, but when she said that she loved you and was going to marry you... Say that again. When she said that she loved you and was going to marry you, I thought she ought to know who you really are. You told her that I was Robert Miller. Yes, and she seemed very upset. If you'll pardon me, I think she misconstrued your intentions. But how could she? I asked her to share a couple of rooms over a garage with me, and she said she would. Quite. Coming from a chauffeur, I admit that implies an offer of marriage. But young Mr. Miller, it's different. You don't think for a moment she thought, yes, I do. That's why she's paying you out. The little devil. I want to go now. Why? We're getting on splendidly. No, let me go, please. Well, I'm going to drive you back tonight. If you must go back. I'm driving back with Mr. Smith. Oh, no, you're not. You're going with me. <laughs> please let me go. <laughs> Nonsense. There's plenty of time. Hello. Oh, Mr. Miller, you are too marvellous. Huh? I love you. I love you. Am I in the way? Yes, you are. Mr. Miller, I adore you. Well, you ought to put your arms around Mr. Miller's neck when you tell him that. Yeah, what's the idea? Mr. be quiet, you. I love you. Well, kiss him. What? Allow me. Now, 
pretend I'm Mr. Miller. Pretend you are Mr. Miller? I couldn't. I hate you. Well, uh, pretend Henry hasn't told you that I am. What did you say? Oh, I hate you. I'm... Goodbye, trouble, and finish